Hi, I'm Robert Timms from the University of Oxford, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the open source battery modeling package PyBAM. PyBAM is a Python based package for simulating battery behaviour. The original aim of PyBAM was to create a framework within which electrochemical models can be developed, exploited and shared, thus enabling multi-institutional interdisciplinary collaboration and accelerating battery research. PyBAM provides fast and reliable battery simulations using state-of-the-art numerical methods. It also facilitates the development of new battery models by having a modular framework. This means that people can come along and extend the existing models in the library or add their own models. This is all done in a very flexible way, which I'll show you more of in the next few slides. One of the other aims of PyBAM is to develop and build the battery modeling community. We now have over 100 users, including more than 10 industry users across the world. We also have a very active community on Slack and GitHub who are there to help with any questions and really make sure the tool is as easy to use and get started with as possible. Within the last year, we've started seeing publications from outside of the Faraday Institution that have used PyBAM as a tool for modeling. I think this really speaks to the um, success of the project. that It's becoming recognized as a, a batch of modeling tool from outside of the Faraday community. By using PyBAM, it makes it easy to other people to reproduce your research so we can be confident in the research that we're producing and the models that we're developing. It also increases impact and industry engagement by making it easy to engage with the work that's going on. In order to help with impact and engagement, there are a number of ways you can get involved with PyBAM. You can try PyBAM online for free in your browser with no need to install. You can install the software locally on your own machine for using. And you can develop PyBAM and this is all handled by GitHub. We really view it as a tool for predicting battery behavior and a way to explore new mechanisms. Um, so the way it works is you can kind of use plug and play physics. So if one person wants to develop a model for SEI growth and someone else develops a model for mechanics, the way the PyBAM framework is set up, you can kind of combine these two things together. So we really can benefit from each other's research. You can use PyBAM with other software. It's very extensible. And one example of this, which I'll show you in more detail later, and was using PyBAM coupled with some other software to do some modeling at the cell scale to let you investigate things such as cooling strategies in jelly roll cells. PyBAM makes it easy to compare models for accuracy and speed. So a large portion of the work going on within Faraday Institution is developing reduced order models, and we can implement these models in PyBAM and compare them to the full models to see how they perform in a wide range of scenarios. We also want to make sure it's easy to use our models in realistic scenarios. So within PyBAM, there's an experimental framework that makes it very easy to specify an experimental procedure you would like to run. So you can use plain English to describe an experiment, pick any model of your choice with any physical mechanisms, and away you go with the simulation. So hopefully this ease of use really increases the impact of all the great work that's going on within the Faraday Institution. This slide really just gives an overview of how PyBAM works. So there are a number of built-in models, and these can be complete models from the literature, such as the popular SPME or Doyle for the newer models. Um, you can include thermal effects in any of these models, and we're getting an increasing range of degradation mechanisms implemented. And as I said before, you can use these in a kind of plug and play way. PyBAM comes with a library of different chemistries or parameter sets for many popular chemistries such as LFP or NMC. And it's very easy to add your own parameter sets or take these existing sets and sort of tweak them um, you might want to match some experiments, for example. On the topic of experiments, PyBAM provides this experimental suite that we saw on the last slide. You can also provide all the parameters either as nonlinear parameters, so they may depend on state, so diffusivity is a function of concentration. And this can be provided with some explicit functional form or as data. We have a choice of different cell geometries, and you can interface with external software. Within the framework, the model and the parameter values are all separate from the discretization and the solver. So as well as having plug and play physics, you can have plug and play numerical methods. So if you've got a great new solver you want to try out, you can use that in PyBAM, no problem, with all the existing models that are already in there. And this makes it easy to compare models, compare parameters, or compare numerical techniques. PyBAM has a simple interface for running simulations. And this means people with little to no coding experience can get up and running very easily. If you just want to run a standard 1C constant current discharge, then you can do this in just five lines of code. All you need to do is pick your model, load up the simulation, and tell it how long you want to solve for. 
you can then plot the results with a simple inbuilt plotting functionality. So on the left here, we've got an example of a 1C constant current discharge using a parameter set from ECHO paper from 2015. Now this particular example took around three seconds to solve on a standard laptop computer when it was discretized to give over 20,000 states. If you reduce the number of states to just 300, then the solve time is just 35 milliseconds. We've already seen an example a couple of slides ago about the experiment protocols that you can use within PyBAM. So you really can just use plain English to describe an experiment, such as a CCCV charging protocol, and go ahead and pass this to your simulation, and PyBAM will handle that for you. So hopefully this makes it very easy for experimentalists to use a lot of the great modelling work that's going on within the Faraday Institution. As well as providing experiments, you can provide dry cycle data and do dry cycle simulations controlled by current or power or even voltage. As I've already mentioned, PyBAM is built around the modular framework, so everything in it is highly extensible. All of the existing models are built as a collection of submodels. So if you've got some new model that only really affects the electrolyte behavior, you can just take the existing model in PyBAM, write up your code for that little piece of electrolyte model, and slot it into a pre-existing model. So hopefully, you know, you're not reinventing the wheel every time, and you can focus on your one specific area you're interested in the battery, and then use that within the existing suite of models. You can also combine different mechanisms. So here we've got an example where we combine an SEI growth model uh, with a model for stress and particle cracking. So, you know, we really are benefiting from all the research that's going on and all this research can interact. And this is where lots of the key questions lie. How do degrad degradation mechanisms interact with one another? And PyBound provides a framework within which you can start to answer some of these questions. So I'd just like to finish off by giving you a few case studies to show some of the great work that's been enabled by PyBAM. So first of all, we've got this coupled model, um, which combines PyBAM with OpenPNM, which is another software package, to do some simulations of a jelly roll. So all the particle scale electrochemical modeling is done within PyBAM, and then a tomography image is taken and is used to construct an equivalent circuit model representation of the entire jelly roll. So here we combine a physics-based local model for the electrochemistry and an equivalent circuit model at the length scale up one, at the jelly roll scale. And you can use this to then solve a heat transfer problem within the jelly roll to understand how heat is generated and transported around. You can use this to do things like investigate different cooling strategies or understand how the location of tab placements or the number of tabs affects cell performance. And this really is just a nice example of the extensibility of PyBAM. It lets you do things beyond what it was originally designed for. Some recent work that was recently implemented in PyBAM is this stress model that we saw a couple of slides ago. And here you have stress response in the electroparticles due to swelling as they delithiate and lithiate. And you also have stress assisted diffusion in here. And you can take this model now and you can combine it with any model. So it's not just like, here's your one model with stress. I can combine this with a single particle model. I can use it in the DFN straight away. And this is this kind of plug and play element of PyBAM really coming into its own. And you can see some of these plots here where we've got some nice comparisons of experimental data. Uh, the final example we've got here is some work done at Michigan to understand degradation LFP. And here PyBAM was used to simulate a door for a new model, and this was fitted to some experiments, um, gave really good agreement, and helped understand how the diffusion coefficient in the anode um, could produce some of the features seen in the experiments. This is a nice example of using uh, PyBAM to do some exploratory work to try and understand the influence of parameter values on the uh, physical behaviour you're seeing in experiments. So if you'd like to know more about PyBAM, this has been a very quick introduction, you can go over to our website, pybam.org, and you can get in touch with us there by hitting the contact button. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, go over to GitHub and take a look at the code for yourself. Join our active community on Slack, where we're always happy to help. And you can also try our examples online. And this is no need to install, so you can just use PyBAM straight in your browser to see things going. Before I finish, I'd just like to thank all of our contributors. We now have over 30 contributors from both within and outside of the Faraday Institution. If you'd like to get involved with PyBAM, please get in touch with us using the contact details on the previous slide. Thank you once again for your attention.